Wirelock is the original cold socketing compound for use with wire ropes. It is quite simply the best socketing solution for safety, dependability and unparalleled fatigue performance. Wirelock has been in general use for over 50 years. Wirelock is produced by the Millfield Group at their headquarters near Newcastle-upon-Tyne in the United Kingdom. The modern factory produces Wirelock in a vast array of standard sizes, from 100 to 2000 cc. The highly skilled workforce can create other kit sizes to order for any project, large or small. Technical expertise is available by telephone or email to answer any questions and offer comprehensive technical advice. Wirelock is distributed internationally and is the number one product for safe and reliable use with bridges, mining, offshore and general engineering. You will see Wirelock in use with landmark constructions across the world, supporting intricate structures like London's Millennium Dome to the iconic London Eye to name just a few. The aim of this film is to show how easy it is to use wire lock correctly and safely when socketing a steel wire rope using a standard tapered socket. Using wire lock properly starts with correct storage. Storing unopened in a cool dry place away from direct sources of heat is important. When stored correctly, Wirelock has a shelf life of 18 months. The expiry date of the product is clearly visible. The kit must not be used past its expiry date. Use immediately once removed from storage. Avoid leaving in direct sunlight. Keep away from radiators or other heat sources. Never leave outside. Socketing is a skilled operation that must be performed by competent personnel and carried out according to the following standards. ISO 17558, EN 13411 and the Wire Rope User's Manual published by the Wire Rope Technical Board. The socketing procedure is outlined in full in the Wirelock Technical Data Manual which gives step-by-step -step instructions. For training purposes, this film should be used in conjunction with the printed materials provided. Copies of the latest Wirelock Technical Data Manual can also be downloaded from www.wirelock.com. In summary, before you begin, check through all the safety procedures and warnings. You will find these in the manual, on the website and at the end of this film. Proper personal protective equipment and clothing suitable for your work environment must be worn. To socket safely and correctly, your Wirelock toolkit should start with the Wirelock Technical Data Manual and must also include wire rope degreaser solvent, wire rope lubricant, tape measure, marking crayon, seizing wire, centralising clamp, adjustable spanner, end cutting pliers, screwdriver, two diameters of pipe, grips, Wirelock putty, puddler cleaning brush, mixing paddle and marlin spike, flat needle or straight wire. The procedure for using wire lock socketing compound will be covered in six parts. Preparing rope and socket. Preparing the broom. Positioning and aligning the broom and socket. Mixing wire lock. Pouring wire lock. 
Removal of clamp and seizing. It is essential to securely seize and clamp the rope to prevent loosening of the wires during cutting. Apply two seizings, one each side of the cutting point. Follow industry standards to cut the rope. Oxyacetylene must not be used. Once cut, the wire ends should be level. Measure the length of the socket basket. Mark the basket length on the rope. Now make two further marks. The first exactly one rope diameter up from the basket length mark. The second mark must be at least one rope diameter down from the basket length mark. In large ropes, the valleys between the strands can be filled with wirelock putty before the seizing. This will help prevent leakage. Next, seize the rope. The seizing will go between the marks either side of the basket length mark. Use only soft tinned or galvanised soft wire or strand for galvanised rope. Use bright, tinned or galvanised soft wire or strand for bright rope. Copper and brass wires shall not be used for seizing. It is very important to seize correctly. If using pear-shaped or other specialist sockets, then the position of the seizing and the length of the broom may have to be adjusted to suit the socket being used. Wire lock is recommended for use with sockets that comply with international, European or national standards and the wire rope user's manual. The socket must be examined carefully for dirt, grease, moisture or signs of physical damage. Large grooves in sockets must be filled before wire lock is used. Next, insert the rope into the socket prior to brooming and slide the socket down the rope. Now, use a centralising clamp positioned exactly a socket basket length from the end of the rope. The clamp will temporarily support the rope in position for brooming. The rope is secured by the centralising clamp and vise to allow the wires to be unlaid right down to the seizing. The main points to remember are cut the rope to industry standards. Make accurate basket length marks. Examine the socket carefully. Secure the rope in a vise using a clamp. Before brooming, remove the seizing wire at the end of the rope that held the strands together when cutting earlier. Using the two diameters of short pipe, Unlay the strands. Then unlay the individual wires of each strand, right down to the seizing, to form a broom. Always start at the core of the rope. Be careful not to disturb or change the lay of the wires and strands under the seizing band. The wires should not be straightened. The opening of the wires to form the broom requires particular care. This is the most critical part of the socketing process because the bottom one-third of the socket provides two-thirds of the holding power. A zip tie can be useful to retain broomed wires while you work on another strand. If the rope has fibre core, it should be cut out, ensuring that the remaining fibre core extends half a rope diameter into the bottom of the socket. The proper opening of the strands right down to the seizing ensures that the maximum surface of the wire is available to bond to. The open broom shall now be cleaned thoroughly. The method of cleaning will depend on the lubricant and or the coating on the wire. Check with your wire rope supplier or manufacturer for recommended materials and check compliance with local legislation.
After cleaning, dry the broom. Compressed air can be used to help with the drying process. Once dry, the wire rope broom should be kept in a horizontal position to prevent any grease or mixture of grease and cleaner from running back down the main body of the rope and contaminating the clean wires. Correct brooming is the most critical part of the socketing process. Always unlay right down to the seizing. Wires should be separated but not straightened. Clean and degrease the open broom. Thoroughly dry before use. Close up the broom to more closely reflect the size of the basket. A vise can be used to assist in the alignment of the axes of the socket and the rope. Correct alignment will help avoid premature failure of the assembly due to fatigue. Make certain that the wires are uniformly spaced within the basket. The wire ends are at the top of the basket. The axes of the rope and socket are aligned. To prevent resin escaping from the base of the socket, use wire lock putty. Sealing is important to prevent voids at the bottom of the socket. Remember, two thirds of the available wedging forces are concentrated in the bottom third of the socket. Voids must therefore be eliminated as they could cause premature failure of the socket. For small sockets, it may be necessary to use a small vent hole in the putty to allow air to escape. Once wire lock leaks from the hole, it should be closed. The broom and socket alignment summary. Close up the clean broom. Align the rope. Wires should be level with the top of the socket. Seal the base of the socket with wire lock putty. It's important to prevent voids inside the socket. Mixing wire lock is easy if you follow the correct procedures. Kits consist of two containers, one liquid and one with powder. Always check the expiry date on the cans. Never use out of date material. It is critical to only use complete wire lock kits. Never use part of a kit. A guide to the amount of wire lock required is available in the wire lock technical data manual. To mix wire lock safely, you must wear safety glasses, gloves, and a mask. Read, understand, and follow instructions on those on product containers before using wire lock. Wirelock is formulated for mixing and pouring in the ambient temperature range of minus 3 to plus 35 degrees centigrade. Pour all of the resin into all of the powder. Take a note of the time and then using a flat paddle mix for two minutes. Wirelock must turn a green blue colour. If it does not turn a green-blue colour when mixing, do not use. It is possible to combine various kit sizes to achieve any required volume. For example, to create 2,500 cc, you could combine two 1,000 cc kits and one 500 cc kit. In this case, all of the powder should be placed in the mixing container and then all of the resin added to it. Always mix all of the powder with all of the resin. Never mix less than the total contents of all cans. To maintain acceptable gel times in temperatures below 9 degrees centigrade, use wire lock booster packs. The wire lock booster pack compensates chemically for the slower gel time experienced at lower temperatures. Only use wire lock booster packs that match the size of the wire lock kit being used. 
Always add the Wirelock booster pack to the Wirelock powder first, and then add the resin. At ambient temperatures below 9 degrees centigrade, but above 2 degrees centigrade, one Wirelock booster pack should be used. Below 2 degrees centigrade, but above minus 3 degrees centigrade, two Wirelock booster packs should be used. In order to comply with all the approvals granted, Wirelock must never be mixed and poured at temperatures below minus 3 degrees centigrade. For any specific questions regarding the use of Wirelock at different ambient temperatures, please contact Wirelock Technical Support. In summary, check the expiry date. Use the entire contents of the kit. Wirelock must turn a green-blue colour when mixing. At colder ambient temperatures, use Wirelock booster packs. Immediately after mixing, pour Wirelock slowly and continuously down one side of the socket to ensure good penetration and to allow air to escape. A one-time pour is preferred. Release any possible air pockets within the socket by using a straight wire or flat needle. Any leaks should be plugged using Wirelock putty. Top up if necessary. Immediate pouring will ensure that the gelling stage occurs in the socket and not in the mixing container. The excess resin left in the mixing vessel should be left to cure before it is disposed of. Do not reseal used cans. Wirelock is designed to gel in approximately 20 minutes at 18 degrees centigrade. Gelling is the transition point from liquid to solid. It will cure within 60 minutes after gelling. The socket must remain undisturbed for an additional 10 minutes after gelling. Once cured, a scratch test should be completed. Take a sharp instrument, press hard and pull over the surface of the resin. A clear white score should be evident. On a small socket, it is quite normal to have a very thin tacky layer on the surface of the resin. The scratch test can be carried out through this layer. To provide an adequate safety margin, no load should be applied to the wire rope assembly until a minimum of one hour after gelling and a successful scratch test has been carried out. As wire lock cures, a chemical exothermic reaction occurs, causing a considerable rise in temperature. Temperatures in excess of 100 degrees centigrade may be reached in large volume kits in the mixing container. In the socket, where the wires of the rope and the socket itself acts as a heat sink, the maximum temperature likely to be achieved will be in the order of 70 to 80 degrees centigrade. When pouring wirelock, remember, pour slowly down one side of the socket. A continuous pour is best. Allow one hour after gelling and successful scratch test before service. Be aware of high temperatures during curing. The final colour of the resin depends on the temperature reached during curing. The hotter the cure, the more sandy brown in colour. Hence, larger sockets tend to have sandy brown cured resin, and smaller sockets will appear greenish blue. After removing from the vise, check for any damage or displaced wire. Next, remove the putty. A visual check for penetration of the resin into the socket bottom can be made. Seizing on the rope adjacent to the neck of the socket should be removed up to the point where it enters the socket. Relubricate the rope below the socket. The rope can be put into service or proof loaded once a successful scratch test has been achieved, but not less than one hour after the material in the socket has gelled. The assembly should be proof loaded. 
Finally, you should take time before using Wirelock to read the latest Wirelock technical data manual. It contains all of the safety procedures. The most up-to-date version can be downloaded from www.wirelock.com. Here are a few of the main safety warnings. Incorrect use of Wirelock can result in an unsafe termination. This may lead to property damage, serious injury, even death. Wirelock resin in liquid state is flammable. Chemicals used in this product can give off harmful fumes. Use only in well-ventilated work areas. Always check expiry dates on the can and never use out-of-date material. Always wear safety glasses to protect eyes and a mask when mixing. Always wear gloves to protect hands. Avoid direct contact with skin anywhere. Crevice corrosion will occur in the rope at the neck of the socket in any termination of stainless steel wire ropes permanently immersed in salt water. When using wirelock within this environment, regular inspection must be carried out. For seizing galvanised rope, use tinned or galvanised soft wire or strand. For bright rope, use bright, tinned or galvanised soft wire or strand. Copper or brass wire shall not be used. Remove any non-metallic coating from the broomed area. Sockets with large grooves need to have these grooves filled before use with wirelock. Never use an assembly until a successful scratch test has been achieved. Read, understand and follow the wirelock technical data manual instructions. Read the instructions supplied with each kit. Check product details printed on the product containers before using Wirelock. If in any doubt, always contact Wirelock Technical Support at www.wirelock.com.